AI. Are you sick of hearing about it? I know I have been, but the reality is it's here and it's not going anywhere. So it's time for us as photographers to stop burying our head in the sand and start to look at ways that we can utilize this new technology in our workflow to hopefully give us some new powerful tools which is going to free us up creatively. So let's take a look. We're in Photoshop beta and got this image here of Patagonia. I captured this in 2019 and never did anything with the image because of one big factor. This huge heavy portion of the frame on the left hand side. I just don't like how I compose this. I feel like I really want a little more sky over there. And this is where we're going to try and give the Gen Feel AI a chance to um, hopefully right my wrongs. And this is a way that we might be able to incorporate this into our workflows moving forward. Another consideration is um, just tidying up images and replacing the clone stamp. If you haven't seen, check out Alistair Ben's video where he shows how you know we can use the the gen fill to really tidy up an image and get rid of that um, mundane sometimes painful process of cloning and using content aware now this example here is pretty extreme i'm not going to lie and that's the whole point right i just want to see how far we can push this and you know potentially fix an image like this which otherwise i wouldn't have published we've got our layer here we're in photoshop beta let's get stuck into it and see what we can do. And to do that, I'm gonna grab the lasso tool and more or less just highlight the area or circle the area that I wanna get rid of. Now, I'm not trying to get the rock completely out of the frame from that horizon point, like the other side of the image. I'm just wondering if we can bring it down enough. So basically that area there, I'd like that to be just sky. So now we've highlighted it. We're gonna go down to its edit, generative fill and here we're just going to push generate we're just going to let it do its thing let's just see what it does all right and then i've got a plan b if this doesn't quite go to plan all right there we go and yeah i'm pretty surprised at that now one thing when it does generate for you you have variations so over here we can slide down we've got different options that one that one there That one's giving me a good amount of sky. Now this is the concern that I have. If we zoom in, it's the resolution. And this is where I guess as the program keeps updating, that res is just gonna get better and better. I think there is potentially ways to upscale, which we're not gonna look at now in this video. But look at the sky though, that's pretty impressive. It's just the rock, which isn't really doing the best job. Plan B then, I'm gonna delete that layer and let's drag the rock down ourselves. So to do that, I'm going to go edit, transform and warp. I'll zoom out partially. What I'm gonna do is just get rid of that, bring it down, get it out of the way about there. And then just to kind of repair some of that warping, we'll just drag this side across just because when you warp, obviously you might affect some other parts of the image. All right, let's say about there. Now we've got that big open space above the rock. Let's see if the gen fill can patch that up with sky for us. So in the past, maybe if I had a separate sky frame, I could have done a sky replacement um, if I shot the sky on that given day. I just didn't have one. Everything was just shot down at this perspective. So now what we might do is basically with the lasso, let's just highlight that whole area, not hitting the rock this time. So we don't have to worry about the low res. And we're gonna go edit, gen fill, generate. Let's see if it can pick up on what we're trying to do and drag that sky over. Ooh, that's compositionally I like this now. I've got the very wide rock section which narrows down. So the real good linear perspective, it's matching this, this other side, good sense of depth, but we're not blocking too much of that sky. So I've got a bit of breathing space. Turn that on and off. You can see where it's patched it up there. Man, let's check the variations while we're here and see what the differences are like. Nothing major. Now let's just zoom in. You know, we had the resolution resolution issue with the rock. Mate, see, that's awesome. I don't know about that strand of grass that it's put there. It's on all of them, so whatever. That's uh, probably actually, <laughs> that was really there. Um, Wow, okay, look at that. 
So in the past, you know, I would have potentially had to expand the sky and mask it in or clone, sky removal, whatever. We've completely been able to pull down that composition and fill it in. Like I said, that's quite an extreme example, but that's highly effective. And now compositionally, I like this image. It wasn't bugging me like it was before. And I'm actually gonna put this in the portfolio. Let's just look at another example of how we can use Gen Fill in our workflow. Two tasks we're gonna try. Let's try and get rid of that grass up there. And then the big one, that huge sun flare. That's a very common scenario we face. If AI can fix this, then man, already I'm gonna be incorporating this into my workflow quite a lot. Let's start off with the grass up here. Lasso, cover it up, edit, gen fill. Pui, perfect. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I don't know about this. There's a lot of tones here, a lot of shapes. Let's highlight that. I don't know how far to go around if you need to really give it a broad space around what you're trying to work on. But anyway, let's see. Gen fill. Mate. Wow. <laughs> Gee. It, that's game changer, that stuff. Look how well it's just matched the tones. And then, of course, up here, that's, that one's an easy one, but still. That's really handy. This just speeds things up and it means less time sitting in front of the computer, more time in the field. All right, guys, there you go. Honestly, I'm quite impressed and surprised at how well this worked and it's only the early days. As I said before, we might not like change. We might fear it at first, but we can't run from it. And if we do, we're just gonna get left behind. It's been a bit of an eye opener for me looking at this. And I know that as the months roll on and the years roll on, this is just gonna get more and more powerful. So I think now is a good time to start to play with this technology and see how you can start to apply it in your own creative workflow. Thanks for checking out the video. If you have any questions or feedback or even new insights on how AI can be used in landscape photography, just leave it in the comments below. Cheers.